Hey, welcome to another episode of Ask a Photo Pro with your friendly neighborhood host. It's me, Cardi. Today we are talking about why 84% of photographers fail and they fail this way the first year. Tonight's podcast, we're going to get into some of the significant issues and mindsets that photographers need to professional photographers, especially those who are struggling. Today, we're going to get into ways that I can help you. Also reminding you, I got a sponsor. Hey, we got a sponsor. And again, I've had so many offers from sponsors and I've said no to all of them. This is the first sponsor that I said yes to. So more on that later. Let's talk about why 84% of photographers fail. First of all, uh, first of all, it's important to dive into why photographers aren't really making their mark. And it's not just an analysis, it's really a wake up call for every aspiring photographer that are trying to actually make their photography center stage. Photographers that are actually trying to make a living at this. <sighs> Many photographers, rather than thinking about how they can bring value to the industry, they're thinking about how the industry can serve them. And that's the first broken mindset. They're doing searches. How do I make more money with my camera? How do I make money at photography? Not, and again, those are necessary concerns to know, but you make money in life by bringing value. So bring value to the photography industry and you'll make money. Many people also, they're financially obsessed. They, they're more financially obsessed over artistic success. They're not success. They're not mentally thinking about how can I make my photography exceptional? How can I make my photography undeniable? They don't spend much time trying to actually get better at the craft, but they're wondering why they're not making any money. It's that financial obsession. And when financial gains become the principal driver of your photography career, your the service oriented and artistic elements of your photography career take a back seat. And this is an art form. Photography at its very core is an art form. When the focus shifts to how much money you're going to make, it seems like that's when people lose the passion. They lose the passion for and the creativity that should be fueling your profession. It's not money. And when you shift your mindset to how you can bring value to people, it impacts the quality and the authenticity of the work and also the satisfaction that you're going to get from this craft called photography. And also from a client's perspective, when you're self-centered, that self-centric approach is usually off-putting and people can see right through it. If you're money driven, clients are looking for photographers that can capture the essence of the moments of their ideas, not someone who's primarily focused on a paycheck. So. That disconnect leads to a lack of repeat business, a lack of referrals and repeat business and referrals are how we make it by in this photography industry. Sometimes photographers prioritize short term financial goals over long term artistic professional development. It's a huge pitfall. You have to really look at a strategy that is different from achieving short term gains, but on the long term, you're winning. If you're focusing on short term gains, it's going to lead to lead to stagnation and a lack of fulfillment. Photographers who stand out in the industry are those that invest in their craft, those that love their craft and are continually pushing their creative boundaries and they're constantly building meaningful relationships with their clients. 
as we get in deeper today to today's podcast, it's important for you to understand you have to reflect on your own personal motivation as far as why you want to be a photographer. What are your priorities? Are you doing this because you have to, meaning this is the light for you? Or are you doing this because you think it's going to be a quick way to make money? Balancing the need to make a living with your passion and committing to serving your client's needs is key to not only succeeding, but thriving in this competitive world of professional photography. Stay tuned today because we're going to explore on how to realign your priorities and how to explore different aspects and different ways to get fulfillment, success and financial stability. Like so many photographers quit. And, and I mean, you're watching me, so you're not going to be one of the ones that I let quit. So let's talk just a little bit about how photographers misunderstand the industry. When I think about the challenges faced by professional photographers, the fundamental misunderstanding of the nature of their work is usually the forefront. Professional photography transcends the simple act of taking pictures. It's about the art and science of making pictures. This little segment here, we're going to talk about how to unpack this concept and the implication for those that are in the field. <laughs> I love when you guys glitch my face. I love when you guys glitch my face. And by the way, I got a new perk for you, my member. Type command big brain and see what happens. Command big brain, all one word. All right. So at its heart, professional photography <laughs> is a service industry. This means that the focus shouldn't just be on serving clients and delivering photos, but creating experiences for our clients and solutions. It's about the understanding of what the client needs, whether it's capturing the essence of a moment, conveying a brand's message, or telling a story through visuals. Understanding and meeting client needs and expectations is kind of critical, critical, pivotal, critical. It requires clear communication skills empathy and the ability to translate your client's visions into photographic realities. That's what we do. It's not just about the technical skills with the camera. I know apertures and shutter speeds and ISOs. It's about listening to your clients and interpreting what they need. Sometimes it's even helping them articulate what it is that they're looking for. Sometimes your clients won't know how to articulate what they need. It's up to you to actually be able to help them through that, that process. Storytelling. There's an art in storytelling and photography, especially in a professional context, is a form of storytelling. Each project or assignment that we do has a unique story to tell. So whether you're shooting weddings or corporate events or doing fashion shoots or even portrait sessions, successful photographers are those that can find and narrate these through these stories through their cameras. And they create images that are resonating, not just with their subjects, but with the viewer of those images on a deeper level. When you overemphasize financial success, bad things happen. When photographers become too focused on income and success metrics, like how many followers they have on Instagram, they risk losing touch with the craft itself. That tunnel vision on financial success only can lead to like a mechanical approach to making photographs where volume overshadows quality and your unique artistic vision. And there's a big risk in general, generic in, in, like imagery. 
if you're creating generic imagery, stuff that people see and forget instantly, in the pursuit of financial goals, if you're falling into the trap of producing that generic formulaic image, it's going to fail to stand out in a saturated market. The market is oversaturated already. So if you're, you, if you're making work that blends, you're just, you're going to be invisible. This not only diminishes your portfolio, but it fails to create a lasting impression on your clients. So linking in with storytelling too, there's an emotional connection to this photography career. Photography is as much about emotion as it is about visuals. A photographer's ability to connect emotionally with your subject matter as well as your clients is what turns a good photographer into a great one. When the focus is income alone, that vital emotional connection is missing. And it makes your work and you less impactful. Let's talk about the value of creating value. The most successful photographers out there are those that understand that their true worth lies in the value that they're creating for their, for their clients and their subjects. It's the value that you create in your work that includes your unique artistic expression and how, how high are you delivering above and beyond your client's expectations. Also, are you creating a positive and memorable experience for everybody that you photograph throughout the whole process? When you're trying to succeed in the world of professional photography, it's essential to understand and embrace the service oriented nature of this business. It's about making pictures, pictures that tell stories, convey emotions and meet and exceed client needs. As we move forward, it's crucial for photographers like you to balance your artistic vision with your client service. The client service is the most important part. You can't lose sight of the passion that brought you to this craft, that brought you to this channel, and the purpose that's likely to draw your clients to you. If you're running a photography business, especially if you're doing that and juggling photo shoots, I've got something that might be a game changer for you. It's called Indie, and trust me, it's like having a personal business assistant, only it's affordable. First off, imagine creating eye-catching project proposals super easily. Indie helps you do that so you can impress your clients and get more gigs. Plus, there's these ready-to-go contracts which are a breeze to sign thanks to electronic signatures. No more paperwork headaches. Then, there's the task management part. You know how you have to keep track of a million things? Indie has a great to-do list and digital tools that let you visualize your work and keep everything super organized. It's really helpful. Invoicing, Indie's got you covered. Send out professional invoices and estimates and let your clients pay through options like PayPal, Stripe, Zelle, and even pay you by check if they need to. Working closely with clients, Indie has a cool client portal where you can chat, share files, and keep everybody in the loop. It's like your project command center. You don't need to use Google Drive. For those of you who are still billing by the hour, there's a time tracker that logs how much time you're spending on each project. Talk about making life easier. And then there's extras like file storage for your photos, customizable forms for all your client interactions, and a calendar that gives you a bird's eye view of your schedule. Here's the kicker. With my promo code CARDI35, you can get 35% off your first year of Indie's Pro Plan, which works out to be about $7.80 a month if you go monthly, and an even better deal of $5.85 a month if you pay annually. It's $5.85. So if you want to focus more on the creative side of your business and less on that stuff that you don't like doing that much, Indie is your go-to. Click the link in the video description, use my code CARDI35, and watch the magic happen. Give it a go. See how it works for you and watch how it transforms your business. Thanks. Hey, I'm back. 
So understand that we have to create value in this photography business. That's the key to success. In the competitive realm of professional photography, the real measure of success actually hinges on the value that you provide. If you're not bringing value to the industry, what are you doing? It's not about what the industry can do for you. It's about what you are bringing to the industry. That value creation, it's multidimensional. It encompasses technical skills, your creative stylistic flair with your camera, and a deep understanding of market dynamics. Now, let's explore how you can build value and offer something to your clients that distinguish you differently from other photographers in the industry. Number one, you have to develop exceptional skills. Excellence in photography, it's not just a natural talent, although that is definitely necessary. It's a skill that's honed over time with practice, study, experimentation. It includes mastering different aspects of your photography techniques, understanding lighting, composition, and being adept to the latest photography, editing, software, gear. We have to be continuously learning. The photography industry is constantly evolving and staying abreast of these changes is kind of crucial. Engaging in continually learning through workshops, online courses, and mentorship programs actually can keep you as a photographer sharp and relevant. Technical versatility. Being versatile and handling different types of photography from editorial portraits to advertising to lifestyle all under the people umbrella, it demonstrates um, the ability to adapt to various client needs all under the same umbrella of your niche. And it gives you a competitive edge. We have to all cultivate an artistic vision and style. What sets a photographer apart in a saturated market is their, is usually their unique style and their artistic vision, their visual signature. That personal touch that a photographer brings to their work turns ordinary, boring photography into captivating, scroll-stopping, compelling visual stories. So as a photographer, we have to develop a signature style. That style becomes our brand identity. And that style becomes something that's uniquely ours. And it makes our work instantly recognizable. Also, we have to have an emotional connection with our work, eh, more so with our work has to create an emotional connection with the viewer. That's better because I feel like we shouldn't have an emotional connection to the work, but we need, we need to create like it has to resonate. So we have to create an emotional renaissance <laughs> resonance, the ability to capture and evoke emotion through our photography. Photos that tell a story touch the heart and can leave a lasting impact, making that photography way more valuable to your paying clients. Customer service. Our customer service and delivering exceptional customer service. I create evangelists because I deliver exceptional customer service. And that goes beyond just delivering quality photos. It involves the entire client experience from the first point of contact all the way through the shoot and the final delivery of your images. You'll notice I try to help people who are in my mentorship, people who are reading my blog and you here watching me on YouTube with effective communication. Effective communication equals lots and lots of money. And you have to learn how to do it. Understanding your client expectations and maintaining clear communication throughout the whole process is a key thing when it comes to a client photographer relationship. I communicate so clearly 
in my emails, in my blog posts, and here on YouTube. I want my information to be absorbed and able to be actioned effectively instantly. Also, after you do the photo shoot, it's not over. There has to be like after photo shoot care, providing excellent after service care, such as follow-ups. Hey, were you happy with how everything went? Photo advice like, hey, please don't put extra filters on top of my stuff as you're putting it on Instagram. And understanding how to handle the feedback that you get from a client can create a lasting impression and turn them into lifetime clients and also help you be better for the next time you work for somebody. Understanding market needs and trends. Being in tune with the market is crucial for us as photographers. It means understanding what clients are looking for and staying current with trends and adapting your services when needed in order to like meet those needs. Doing market research definitely helps. It helps photographers understand what kind of photography is in demand. What kind of photography is actually getting work? What kind of photographers are getting hired and what work is getting them hired? What clients are paying for and what kind of storytelling is resonating with that particular audience. When it comes to adapting to trends, you have to maintain your unique photographic style, your visual signature, but it's also important for photographers to adapt a little bit to the current trends in order to stay relevant. It, it could include embracing a new technique, maybe cop in a new lens, not changing your style too much, but evolving your style as the industry evolves and evolving brings us into the adaptability like if i wasn't an adapter number one i wouldn't be in a new space number two i wouldn't even be here i wouldn't be a work i'd have another job because i saw in 2004 that photographers were switching from film to digital and it was scaring the life out of me. I had a Hasselblad and was shooting Hasselblad film 120 and realizing like if I didn't switch, my career was going to be over. And the photographers that didn't switch, so many photographers with their RZ67s and their Pentax 67s like fell off. And they never learned. They thought digital was a novelty. Funny. Now film's a novelty. So the ability to adapt is crucial in order to create value for your clients. It involves being flexible so you can meet your clients' needs. Flexible in all kinds of ways, including schedule and adjusting to working conditions that might not be ideal. When it comes to making images, you would be absolutely surprised and when you would see sometimes the conditions in which I have to make photographs but focusing on the adaptability part of it makes it so I'm open to new ideas and new approaches and new possibility in essence when you're creating value in your photography business it's about being skillful unique customer service oriented market aware and adaptable. It's about what you as a photographer can contribute to the industry rather than what the industry can do for you. By focusing on these areas, you can not only achieve success, but also enrich the industry with your contributions. It's not about you. It's about what value you bring. That's how you work. Let's talk a little bit about reputation. Reputation is big. I have a good reputation in the industry. I've been working on this reputation for three and a half decades. So in the realm of professional photography, sustainability and reputation, they, they go like that. They're intertwined and they're very key to a long lasting successful career. Photographers who prioritize value creation 
over financial gains are better positioned to establish a strong, enduring presence in the industry. And let's deep in, let's deep dive on how sustainability and reputation are built and why they matter. Number one, sustainability in a photography career is about more than just enduring. It's about thriving. For a good long time in my photography career, I was making work. I was getting hired, but I was enduring. I wasn't thriving. So when I started to focus a little bit more on delivering value and deliver and creating long-term relationships with my clients, those relationships led to repeat business, which is more reliable and a less resource intensive than constantly seeking new clients. Also adaptability and growth. I realized like I had the talent, but I didn't have the information. So once I deep dived on information, a sustainable career is about one that adapts and grows. And in order to grow, you need inputs. Plants need sun and water in order to grow. Those are a plant's inputs. For us, we need information and outputs of creativity. Photographers who are open to learning, experimenting, and evolving with the industry trends and client needs are more likely to sustain a long-term career. Reputation. Reputation in the photography industry is like currency. It literally, it's like currency. It's built over time and is the deciding factor in a photographer's success. Like literally, like you only get one chance to make a first impression and your reputation. No one needs to go near a skunk to know that a skunk can mess up your week. You know, the skunk has a reputation. So people don't mess with skunks. You need to create a reputation that has people. Whoa, I just knocked myself. That's something I got to get used to. Did you see? I just knocked myself with the mic. <laughs> the mic usually comes over the top and I have all this clearance with my hands. Getting used to it. Reputation is built on professional integrity. Ethical business practices. Respecting client confidentiality. And delivering on the things that you promise. Honestly. If you make promises to yourself and you don't keep them how can you get good at making promises to the clients that you have and keeping those get better at holding your promises and keep yourself accountable to the things that you need to do for yourself in order to get your career to the next level and it'll make it a lot easier for you to live up to the expectations that your clients will have of you by the way, my expectations of you are still less than what your client's expectations of you will be. And my expectations of you are high. For some of you, my expectations of you are higher than the expectations that you have of yourself. You definitely have to change that. Reputation is built on professional integrity, ethical business practices, confidentiality, and delivering on promises. A reputation for integrity as a photographer sets you apart in the industry. And trust with a photographer, trust is paramount. Be like that and you can't, you can't fail. Remember, there's big pitfalls. If you keep thinking about how do I make money? 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 And it's hard because Oftentimes, photographers are broke. Photographers who focus primarily on making money see short-term gains, but could be detrimental in the long run. Remember, we're trying to retain clients and money first, money first approach can lead to poor client retention. 
Clients are drawn to photographers that show genuine interest in their project, truly. And it's, it's easy to see genuine interest, not people who are thinking about um, how much money they're gonna make. Yet clients don't wanna be seen as a source for income. Ultimately, ultimately the goal for photographers like us is to create a legacy. Create legacy work that's remembered long after it's created. It requires a balance of artistic excellence, client service, and business understanding. You know, I, it's... Legacy is the reason, is one of the reasons that I got into photography. It was about like, I want my photographs to live on long after I'm here. And thinking about the people who I've had a chance to photograph, this is a legacy. And it, it's insane. Sandra O oh and Ludacris and Pete Rock. It's, it's really insane to me that I've, I've created this legacy through photography. It's what we're here for. We're trying to create a legacy. Work that's remembered and revered long after we're gone, long after it was created. Honestly, our artistic contribution to the industry can be such a significant part of our legacy. Creating work that's not only commercially viable, but also meaningful and influential. It's what we're trying to do. And you need a community. If you're watching this program and you've been watching me for a while and you're still not in my Discord community, being involved in a photography community and contributing to the industry can also enhance your reputation. I tell photographers, practice being a part of a community so you can learn how to grow your own. Practice bringing value to a community so you can bring value to your own. And also, there's so many mentors in my, I mean, I'm a mentor for so many, but there's so many mentors that are in my Discord. So many people that overextend themselves in order to help another photographer. Like attracts like. So if you've downloaded the app, but still haven't jumped into my Discord, please do it for you. Don't do it for me. Ah, I'm being glitched. <laughs> Building a sustainable career and a strong reputation in professional photography is a multifaceted endeavor. Hi, it, thank you. It demands dedication to creating value and you have to maintain a high standard of quality and integrity. We gotta be continuously nurturing client relationships. And when we focus on these areas, we can ensure that our careers are not only financially successful, but also rich in fulfillment and respect. So let's get into the learning mindset. And I had to, I actually had to shift into the learning mindset. I thought school was over. I thought school was over when I finished photography school back in the 90s early 90s 1990 let's be real it was almost the 80s in the dynamic field of professional photography success is not just measured by what whip you have in your driveway but also the continual development and evolution of your skills and your perspective A learning and growing growth mindset is fundamental for photographers who are aiming to thrive and adapt in an ever-changing industry. And imagine, the industry is like a rushing river. And if you're a static thing, 
like a sword in the stone in the river. The river just goes around you. It doesn't stop because you're there taking your stand. The industry just goes around you. You have to be liquid and you have to be able to move with the industry in order to be successful. A learning mindset with photography involves a commitment to yourself that you're going to be continually acquiring new knowledge and new skills. That's a commitment that you have to make to yourself. And it's not limited to just technical proficiency, but it extends to all aspects of this profession. So you gotta be continuously upgrading your skills, whether it's mastering the latest camera technology, finally switching over to mirrorless, learning post-processing. Oh my God, I've never opened Photoshop. I just used Lightroom. Exploring other niches within your umbrella. I shoot portraits, but can you shoot lifestyle? I shoot portraits, but can you shoot editorially? <sighs> Doing this keeps a photographer relevant and competitive. The reason that 84% of photographers fail is because of all the stuff that I'm talking about right now. So embrace growth and change. If you're doing something and you get butterflies, you're doing the right thing. The butterflies is yourself in the future, giving you that pitter patter in your stomach because you're actually changing the trajectory of your life by doing so. The photography industry is subject to rapid changes in style, technology, and approach. So, Client perspectives and client preferences change all the time. Yes yes. So photographers with a growth mindset and adaptability and flexibility to these changes view this as opportunities, not obstacles. Embracing a growth mindset encourages innovation. Are you an imitator or are you an innovator? As a photographer, I'm an innovator. What are you? Embracing a growth mindset encourages innovation. Experiment with new ideas, push your creative boundaries, and for God's sakes, step out yes of your yes. comfort zone. Step out of your comfort zone. Your comfort zone is where dreams go to die. <laughs> What a great, great, great screenshot. Building relationships, a learning and growth mindset also involves a deeper understanding of your client's needs and a bigger understanding of why you have to foster relationships. When you have a client-centric approach rather than a money-centric approach, now you're winning. Successful photographers invest time in understanding their clients' perspectives and their needs. They spend time trying to figure that out. They ask questions, they solicit feedback, and they use that information to refine their approach and their services. Strong client relationships are built on trust, reliability, and quality service. Photographers who are committed to about learning how their clients feel after their photo shoots, how clients feel during their photo shoots, and how clients feel before they say yes, you're gonna be able to create meaningful and lasting connections. More, many, many, many photographers are just afraid to ask questions, but I ask a lot of questions. We gotta be on a quest for continual improvement. That's your quest, continually improving. It's a key component to the growth mindset. It involves self-evaluation. People who are submitting their photos to me for review, they're asking for continual evaluation, constructive criticism, and that helps them in their pursuit of excellence.
I thought I, I was forgetting how to speak there for a second. <sighs> when you seek and respond positively to feedback and critique, you're growing. It's essential for growth, but nobody wants to hear what they're doing isn't amazing. Oh my God, you're amazing. You're so amazing. You're an amazing photographer. Everybody wants to hear. No one wants to hear. Why are you dropping your horizontal subject matter directly center? Are you aware of the gutter? Are you aware that this is an eight by 12 and like eight by 10? Just like people don't want rules attached, especially by someone else, but they also want to work. They also want to work in the industry. And then they wonder why they're not working because they don't have another professional guiding them along the way. If you think that you're going to be a professional photographer and make a living at this, and you're doing this alone, just watching YouTube with no community, no mentoring, no professional training, like, wow. I mean, you're just setting yourself up with like stacking the like wall in front of yourself. And it's super easy. Just get professional coaching. Just do the things that you need to do in order to help you get to the next level. Personal projects. Engaging in a personal project is a great way for photographers to challenge themselves. This is why I give you assignments. Right now, our current assignment is shoot a vertical advertising image. <laughs> shoot a vertical advertising image. When you engage in personal projects, it's an amazing way to challenge yourself. It's a great way for you to explore new concepts. And it's a great way for you to express your artistic vision without the constraints of clients telling you what to do. We have to stay curious, right? We do. Curiosity and passion are the driving forces behind me as a person. And it's the driving force behind the success of my business and my growth mindset. They fuel me. They have, they, it, it creates a, like passion creates a desire for me to explore, learn, and make cool shit. I have a passion for the craft. You guys can see clearly, I have a passion for photography. And a genuine passion for photography is what motivates photographers to keep learning and growing. The photographers that aren't truly passionate about this craft they're going to fall by the wayside. They just are. So stay in it, stay passionate, and you'll win. You have to love the process as much as the outcome, but you can't have an emotional attachment to your work because if you do emotionally, oh my God, I love that photo. Yeah, but it sucks. When someone says that to you, it's going to hurt your feelings. But if you realize like photographs are just little bits of media that you're putting out there. And there's millions of bits of media out there. And sometimes photographers can't tell whether they're contributing to the noise or if they're creating something unique. So I try to help photographers see the difference between unique and noise. As we wrap up today, I want you to think about the critical aspects of the journey of a professional photographer like you and realize that this journey of success is filled with multifaceted demanding things yet it's profoundly rewarding. I've uncovered today that success in photography transcends just technical skill or financial gains. I make $100,000 a year as a wedding photographer. But are you any good? I make $100,000. But do you like it? I make $100,000. But are you passionate about it? I make $100,000. It's like, you know what I mean? Are you soulless? I make $100,000. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my goodness. Understand, it's deeply rooted, this whole thing called success in a mindset that values continuously learning, serving your clients and 
artistic integrity, character. There's some actionable steps that you can take in order to realign your focus so you can embark on a more fulfilling and prosperous career path. So let's get into some actionable steps before we wrap up today. Evaluate your motivations. Why did you choose photography? Ensure that your passion for the craft is not overshadowed by your financial gains or your wish for financial gains. Set long-term objectives, long-term objectives that balance your financial needs, but also include your artistic growth, your client services, and inputs of information. Commit to lifelong learning. Commit to it. Enroll in a masterclass, enroll in a mentorship, enroll in a workshop, take a course, stay updated with the latest. That's how you're going to make it. Dedicate time, dedicate time to personal projects that challenge you, that challenge your creativity, challenge your techniques and challenge your skills. Develop an artistic voice. Experiment with different styles and techniques so you can find and refine your photographic style, your voice, your visual signature, how you see with the camera. And create a portfolio that reflects that and showcases your absolute best work. Enhance those client relationships. You can foster effective communication with your clients and you can really work hard on understanding their needs so you can meet them and exceed them. Build trust through reliability, ethical practices, and delivering an exceptional experience while you're working with a client and exceptional results afterwards. Stay adaptable and embrace change. Keep an open mind when it comes to new trends and technologies because the industry is ever changing. But I love my DSLR. Yeah, but everybody shoots mirrorless. Yeah, but I love it. Yeah, but it's over. No camera companies are making them anymore. Yeah, but I love it. It's like, okay, but like, that's not being adaptable or flexible at all. Be flexible in your approach to accommodate a diverse client need and market shifts adapting and i i was one of those ones it was like pff, mirrorless until i got one until i realized how like mirrorless cameras have changed video forever i'm using a canon r50 two of them one's right here and this is right here and focus tracking all this stuff like i move over here it focuses i move over here it focuses i move up close it focuses. I used to use iPhones as my cameras and they looked great to me. I couldn't justify spending $2,000 on cameras for a podcast, but I upgraded and I'm so glad I did. I adapted. Seek constructive feedback. Getting feedback from people who don't have a clue about photography doesn't help you. Literally, it doesn't help you if your girlfriend is like, wow, babe, you're amazing. Okay. <laughs> is your girlfriend an art director? <laughs> like, yes, we need that support, but you got to seek feedback from people who are in the industry, people who are ahead of you, people who know more than you, who can actually help you see things in your work that not only you don't see for sure people who you're asking that have no relevance to the industry they're not going to see it and likes on instagram that's not validation embrace critique as a tool for growth and refinement of your craft nurture your passion Regularly engage in activities that reignite your love for photography, like doing my photo assignments. My photo assignments are actually designed to go directly into your portfolio after you do them. Why wouldn't you do them? It's like every week you have a new shot for your portfolio that's industry standard for a specific purpose. 
give back to the community. Participate in community events, go on photo walks, or offer coaching, mentorship to somebody who's behind you. Point people to me as a way that you're mentoring another. Say, hey, this is the person who has helped me get to the next level. Maybe he can help you as well. Like, help. Be a source of resources, not just a great photographer. When you share your knowledge in community formats, it also enhances your reputation and gives you the confidence to do it in other places as well. By implementing these steps that I went over today, photographers can cultivate a more sustainable and fulfilling career. You can become a part of the 16%. The key lies in embracing a mindset that, that a mindset that cultivates and prioritizes continuous growth, value creation, and a deep connection with the art of the craft itself. Success in photography, professional photography, it's not just about capturing images, it's about capturing emotion, telling stories, and leaving a lasting impact through your work. I synthesized today ways, tangible steps that you can actually become part of the 16% of photographers that aren't falling into the pit, those common pitfalls that so many photographers face. And you're going to have a lasting, lasting kick at the can in the industry. Know that I've created the Cardi Method, which is a six-phase system for helping you get from where you are right now to the life of a full-time working pro. It works. And I have a masterclass where I go through those phases every month, one phase at a time. I have one-on-one -on -one coaching where I can do that with you one-on-one, -on -one. portfolio reviews. I have so many different ways. Go to thecardimethod.com and learn a little bit more about how I can help you in your photography education. Lastly, this commercial-free episode was brought to you by the members of this channel. Know this, if you're a member, it's because of you that we have commercial-free content during my live streams. As soon as I end this stream, though, I turn the commercials on. But for those of you, even if you're not a member, if you're watching at home, know that it's because of the members. So be, consider becoming a member so you can also support the stream and chat with me live during these live streams. And also you can become a submission level member to have your images. You can submit your images through my Discord and I review them every Thursday. I give assignments every Thursday. This week's assignment, as mentioned before, is a vertical advertising image very, very good on the Time Warp Vicky or Steven, whoever caught me. Appreciate you guys for being here. Please support the sponsors. If you're trying to organize your photography business, again, I wouldn't take on a sponsor if it wasn't an absolute game changer. So thank you to Indy for sponsoring this episode. We are Indy slash Steve hyphen cardi that is how and cardi 35 at checkout to get a year off your first pro year five dollars and 80 cents a month come on guys i hope today brought you value remember the hardest part is showing up i hope you guys are enjoying the new set we're starting to get there we're starting to develop the set i'm starting to feel a little bit more comfortable here my couch is here and once I have this, once I get back from Mexico, because I go to Mexico on Thursday. So by the way, no episode on Thursday, because I'm going to be in Mexico. And Sunday, I'll be in Mexico. Maybe I'll be able to do an episode on Thursday, but this is all part of my refresh. You can see my light and my energy is making me very happy. I'm so happy that I've moved almost all of my stuff here. I still have about 50% of my stuff at my other apartment. Right now I have two flats, but 
Um, this one's amazing. Once I'm completely moved in, you will have a desk tour. I will go through all the time lapse of doing all this incredible stuff in here. And I'll walk you through my insane desk setup. My desk right now, it's my dream desk. So can't wait to break it down with you guys. I hope today brought you value. I will see you in a week, next week, Tuesday. So no Thursday, no Sunday. I'll see you Tuesday. I hope today brought you value. By the way, if you tuned in live, thank you. Please leave me a comment and let me know what part of what I talked about today was the most valuable to you. What part did you feel like maybe you could do better at? What part did you think, wow, I could definitely be doing a lot more of that? Also, understand I do read every comment. I took a week off or two weeks off looking at comments. So I do have two weeks of YouTube comments to get back on, but know that I do read them all. I will catch up on every single one of them. And I do need more. If this content brought you value, leave me a comment again, like all of us content creators have to say like, share, subscribe, because we actually need you to do those things. Honestly, I need you to do those things. Joining my Discord is free. Subscribing is free. And bringing value to strangers is also free, which is what I'm doing right now. Love you all.